Republican lawmaker from South Carolina introduced a bill in the House that would decriminalize recreational marijuana use at the federal level. Now, the move gives states the power to determine whether to legalize the drug for residents who are over age 21. The measure, which has bipartisan support and will be co-sponsored by half a dozen GOP House members, would levy a 3 percent federal excise tax on cannabis products that would go toward small businesses and programs like retraining law enforcement and mental health services. It would also expunge nonviolent cannabis-only offenders. We're joined right now by Representative of Nancy Mace from South Carolina. She introduced the bill. Thank you for being with us. And good morning. Thank you for having me. So let's make this really easy to understand because I, I want to talk mm -hmm. about those nonviolent drug offenders who have only used mm -hmm. uh, marijuana. That, that is something of interest to a lot of people because there has been some question over whether they are being fairly treated or fairly judged once breaking a law like this. Right. And, you know, I, I crafted this bill in a way that brought together uh, pro pieces of different bills that had been filed previously or discussed, whether those were Republican or Democrat. I tried to make this palatable for both sides of the aisle and having expungement and release of federal uh, nonviolent cannabis users uh, it was a big component of that. Um, Republicans and Democrats alike have for years now uh, tried to create second chances for these kinds of individuals, and this bill does that. It will affect about 2,600 inmates, uh, given the expungement and release, and then it allows states to do what they are doing today and want to do with regards to release and expungements. This is a great bill that gets the federal government out of the way of what states are already doing today and uh, does that levies the 3% excise tax and uh, creates a framework for regulation at the federal level, much like alcohol. And so the, the goal is to get Democrats and Republicans to work together on a bill that's viable. And this one is the art of the possible and passable. Let's talk about where that money will go from that excise tax in just a bit. But mm -hmm. recreational marijuana, it's already legal in 18 states. So when you make it legal right. at the federal level, how will that affect the states who do not have uh, that same law in place? Well, it doesn't change anything for states uh, for whatever they're doing today. They can continue doing that today when it be grandfathered in. Um, across the United States, there are 47 states, so all but three have some form of cannabis reform or legalization. For example, in my home state of South Carolina, we permit CBD and hemp is grown there. In Florida, they have medical cannabis. In California and, and 17 other states, they have adult recreational use. And so none of that would change. States would be able to operate the way that they're operating today and this really just provides the framework for how it would get re regulated so at the federal level if you're a grower it's under the USDA if your product it's the ATF interstate commerce under TTB and I'm calling it FDA light for some labeling on uh, medical cannabis at the federal level and states would be able to regulate what they do with medical cannabis um, this is something for everyone in it and if you're if you're if you're not a pro cannabis that's okay because this doesn't uh, make it legal for recreational use everywhere. That's not what this does. It allows states to do what they want to do and are doing today. If you're pro-cannabis, this allows states to do what they're already doing today and have been for almost 25 years in some cases. So um, I'm really proud of the product we've produced and look forward to working with Democrats and Republicans to make it even better. But there are a lot of uh, state lawmakers who are really against it. In fact, in your home state, uh, this bill, again, you've mentioned it a couple of times just in this interview that states have mm -hmm. the right to choose. But in terms of the pushback, what do you make of it? What is the biggest concern with lawmakers who say no way? Well, my, yeah, my state party put out this kind of bizarre statement a couple of days ago about the bill. But guess what? In Republican South Carolina, it was a Republican legislature that, read, that uh, led the reforms to allow CBD and hemp in the state of South Carolina. And guess what? It's Republicans that are leading an effort to bring medical cannabis to South Carolina. That bill, the Compassionate Care Act, gets a hearing in January. I worked on that bill as a state lawmaker. Um, and this is a 70-30 issue. I don't know why some Republicans you know, are pushing back on federalism and states' rights, that's, that's something that Republicans champion, right? And I, I find it kind of ironic uh, in a place like South Carolina where Republicans are the ones leading on this issue. It's the state party that's pushing back. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Well, I think that, would you say that there is a lot of controversy still surrounding marijuana use? Do you think that many in your party believe that this is still a gateway drug, even with so many of the progr uh, progressive uh, 
things that have been done, you know, the acceptance of marijuana more in society. Do you think that this excise tax is a way of smoothing things over with those who think that this is still something that should be illegal? Certainly, and, and I, I think there is some of that sentiment out there. The beauty of the 3% excise tax, it is very much different than Senator Schumer's proposal of 25%. If you have a, a tax that high, there's going to continue to be an illegal, illicit, and black market. And so this bill, again, would provide a framework that would, would reduce the, the proclivity for an illicit market or a black market in states across the country. So this is a really responsible bill, and, it, you know, Cannabis is legal in, in some form or fashion in 47 states already, including South Carolina. And so if you want it done in a responsible way, in a bipartisan way, Republicans have to have a seat at the table. And we've got to have a voice. And that's what this legislation does. Representative Mace, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you giving us some insights thank into you. your bill. Well, cold. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.